Segment 7 for the Breckenridge Design Project will include creating our terrain and site plan. We'll begin with creating our terrain perimeter, adding the elevation data, finalizing the site plan, placing the driveway, walks, and stairs, as well as the water feature and landscaping. If you take a look at the completed rendering, you can see that the terrain actually slopes from the garage up towards the back of the house, and then our site plan. When you create your site plan, typically you may have a file from your surveyor which you can import into Chief Architect along with the elevation data or in my case I don't have the digital file but I do have a picture of it that may have come from an assessor or an equivalent. I also have the bearing line information without the curves. Let's take a look at how this goes into Chief Architect. You can create your train and site plan on any floor. You'll notice in my design that my terrain actually is at ground level off of the garage and then slopes upward. Therefore I'm going to create my terrain on floor zero inside of our plan. I'm on floor zero. Currently I have my walls turned on for my foundation set. I'll show you how to overlay your footprint and your roof plan as well. One of the easiest ways to create your site plan is just to begin with a terrain perimeter. Keep that and in a 3D view you can see the default terrain that was created. Now in our case, back in our terrain, if we zoom out a little bit, we already know what the attributes are of that ter terrain perimeter, referring back to this image, and I'm actually just going to draw this by hand. I could shape this terrain perimeter with my dimension tools, but it's easier just to use the line input tool. Under the CAD menu, under line, you'll find input line. Under the distance, field, I'm going to enter in the first distance of 169 feet. In this case, my angle is at zero. Click the next button. And in this one, it's 111 feet and 9 inches. And the angle is minus 90 degrees. The next distance is 40 feet, 5 and 11 sixteenths. Then referring back to our diagram, you'll notice the bearing line information that I'm going to actually copy and input that into the field. Under the angle, I'm just going to press the paste key click next and you'll see the line draw. The next segment is 64 feet and two and a half inches and again I'm going to paste the information from the diagram click next and this segment is 56 two and nine sixteenths and for the angle I'll paste that and then the final dimension here is 147 four and five eighths. Now when I press the tab key here it'll convert that into inches for me so I can't control that. Final angle I'll enter in click OK if I select on those lines, it formed a closed polyline. Now before I turn on my bearing information, I'm going to create a copy of this and use it for my setback. Underneath my preferences for edit behaviors, I'm going to use a concentric copy. My setback, setback is 20 feet, so I'm going to put in 20 feet. When I use the copy command, it's going to then create a concentric copy inside 20 feet of the original item. Using the copy key, just pull that in and that creates that concentric copy. I'll press Control E on the keyboard and change the layer style of this object to be on our terrain setback layer. So I'll just press T on the keyboard here, find my terrain setback. I've got a different line style set up and now that represents my terrain setback. Going back to the original terrain that we created using the lines, I'm going to use the tool in the bottom of your screen called Convert Polyline. With this selection, I'm going to choose the terrain perimeter, so I'm going to convert those lines, which created a closed polyline, to a terrain perimeter. And in the dialog here, I'm going to uncheck automatic. I've created this terrain on floor zero. You'll notice here my floor indicator, floor zero. And my floor above is actually 130 inches and 5 eighths, so I'm going to enter that in for my subfloor. And that way my terrain will be in reference to that because my garage is on the ground level exactly one story below the main level. For my thickness, this is only for 3D representation. You can choose to have that thick or not. It has no bearing on your terrain. And for clipping, I normally have this hide terrain in intersected by the building. Temporarily, I'm going to turn that off. I'll turn it back on for the purpose of the demo so we can see the way our terrain is being created. Select OK. And in the 3D view, you can see our terrain the way it looks. Back in the floor plan view, I'll select the terrain and turn on, let's go ahead and open it up. I'm going to turn on the information about the length and the angle. Select OK. And if you zoom in, this diagram's a little bit different if I pull up the other image where I have quadrant bearing information. You can change that setting in your defaults underneath general CAD, changing that to quadrant bearing. Select OK, and now those two numbers should match exactly. 
The next step is to curve the front lines on the perimeter and I'll begin on the far right hand side. Back in the program, select this line, use the convert to arc tool in the lower left hand section of your menu. Once that's selected, I'll press Ctrl E or Command E on the keyboard, choose to lock the cord, and then with the radius selected, I'll enter in the radius information from the diagram, which was 29 feet 7. Select OK. Select this line. Convert to an arc. And I'm just going to hold my control key down and pull this in a little bit. Again, open that line segment up. The cord is locked. Enter in the radius, which is 127 feet, 5 and 3 sixteenths. Press OK. And then the final line here, again, convert to an arc. Open that up. Cord is locked. And for the radius, 69 feet, 1 foot, and an 8. Select OK. Taking a 3D view, you can see the terrain is updated. And now I need to do some sloping and create some flat areas for the garage. In the floor plan view, zoom back in here. Using the terrain elevation line tool, draw a line on this side. It's always good to have those lines overlap the terrain. In this case, I'm going to enter in um, a little over 8 feet for that elevation line. And I'm just going to create a copy of that line since it's easier. It already has the right length on it. And I'm going to change this one to minus 4 inches. So I basically have about 9 feet in elevation change. You can see the terrain update and back in the 3D view. I now have the gentle slope that I need, but you can see the terrain is actually in the garage. Let's go back into our terrain and enable the hide terrain intersected by the building and clean that up. Now you can see my terrain is now needs to have some flat areas and some adjustment back in my plan view. I'm going to use a tool called the terrain elevation region and draw out an area in front of the garage here and create a flat area for that. And I'm going to reshape this using the number three on the keyboard. I'm going to create a break in this area and just kind of make this parallel with the front of the garage and then open it up and put in a minus four inches which is the same as that elevation line and actually I'll go ahead and remove that elevation line it's no longer required create one more terrain elevation in the back and in this case I'm going to set this to also be a hundred inches which was the value of the other elevation line notice that my interior is marked as flat for these items go ahead and delete that one more elevation region in the front here approximately and I'm going to also set this one to be at 100 inches and then probably one more in the back over here. I'm going to raise this one up just a little bit here and set it at a 124 inches. Select OK. Go back into the 3D view. You can see the terrain is progressing. I'm going to add a, maybe a couple more small flat regions in here where the stairs will come down and the pond will land and then place our, our road tool as well. Returning back to the plan view, I'm going to turn off these elevation regions simply by selecting the object layer properties and turn those off. And for the site plan, you may typically want to see the roof outline. I've created a layer set for that roof under my layers. And if I come down here to the roof set, and go back up to floor two where that roof set is located. You can see this is the outline of my roof. And then with a reference display set, if I press F9 on the keyboard, you can see that this is my deck outline. And what I've done here for my reference display set is I've created one called reference display floor below. And the only thing that I have turned on in this area come down to my walls deck you can see that that's the only thing turned on typically the reference display will be in red I've turned that to gray and now you can see the outline of this I may also select this roof and in the layer properties here for that layer change that to be maybe a, a gray color so it's not so harsh in there so this represents an outline of the roof overlay and if I do a CAD detail from view that creates an exact view of that. I like to think of the CAD detail from view as kind of a screen capture utility. In this case I'm going to select the roof planes and I'm going to give them a slight fill. Open those up, choose a gray style, and give it a 50 percent transparency. That way we can see through and the walls underneath or anything else we may have underneath. And for the deck, 
I actually don't have a closed polyline so I'm just going to go in and clean up a few of these lines and close the polyline. Let me go ahead and zoom in. I've just deleted the inner lines here. Pull this line back and snap it and I'll just delete these couple of lines. With this line selected I'm just going to come around and create the shape or the outline for the house. Again I'm not going to be too precise on this for the video. And let's pull that up until we get a closed polyline and let's pull this one back. Grab those couple of lines and delete them. Once I have a closed polyline, pull this back. I can now open that up and again give it a fill style. Choose our color for the fill style. And in this case I'm going to give it a little bit different color so that it stands out from the roof. And we'll just kind of make that a little bit lighter yellow. And again use a 50% transparency and select OK. Deselect it. This now represents the footprint that I want to overlay. I'm going to draw a marquee by holding the shift key down around the entire block and using the block tool in the lower left section of your screen, make block. That's now a block that I can copy. I'm going to go ahead and copy that. And actually before I do that, let me open this block up and I'm going to put it on a specific layer. You can give it a uh, floor plan footprint for the block name if you want to. And then I have a layer that I've already set up for that. Let's type in footprint and see where I've got that. So I've created a layer called CAD footprint. I'm going to select that and assign that on that layer. With it still selected, I'm going to press the copy key, go back to the floor plan, and change my layer set back from the roof set back to the terrain set, and then move down to the floor zero that our terrain is on. And I'm just going to hold the tool here called paste and hold position and that will overlay that exactly on the design. So now I have the view that I want for my site plan. If you download my construction drawings off the Chief Architect website for this plan, you'll notice in my site plan I have my utilities lines, I also have a legend and some callouts. Let me show you a few of these things back in the plan. When you draw a line using the line tool here, and I'll just come in and uh, roughly create a line that might represent our gas line and select that, open it up. First of all I want to make sure that it's on the right layer and I may choose a different color of, for that. In this case I use something like a red. And then for the line styles you can choose a variety of line styles. Here's a gas line, here's a G line. I happen to use a G line for my case. There's a small version and a large version of that. Choose which one you want. Use a uh, larger one for this video. Select OK. And then that represents my gas line. I would do the same thing for the other lines, for the cold water, sewer. And then there's also a callout that you can play. Then using the callout tool, I'll just come in here and create a callout. My layer, my color. I'm going to change this specifically for this color. The text style, again, I'm going to change that and I'm going to use a 24 inch. This is my plot plan so it's going to be a little bit larger. Again change the text color and select OK and the call out. I'm going to use a square and then we'll just make the uh, G here. These utility lines are a little bit unique so I made them red. I'll just usually take these two items, create a copy of them and just kind of use this to save time. Let's pull this over here and then I can move this line around. Let me undo that can move this line around and create a different style of line for it. You just open this up and change the line style. In this case I'm looking for something I can use as a drain fill. I'll come down, find the appropriate line, select OK, and then I can update the call out in this case to be the D, and then add my text in here. I'll reshape that line. Then I'll add a little bit of text next to that. Come in here, I'll just use a, uh, usually I set my default font to be the Chief Architect Blueprint, but you can choose any of your system fonts in here. Select OK. Again, I'm just going to use the 24 inch that I had selected for the other text. And then I'll just paste my text in. Select OK. And I'll usually make my way around the plan and add all my details in here. One of the things I've noticed is my north pointer is not being displayed. And really when you create your plot plan you have to have one. Let me turn that layer on for my north pointer. 
and display that. And that's what affects your bearing line. So if you try to do that um, as you're following along the video, I probably uh, didn't have that turned on and didn't show that step to begin with. Make sure you have your north pointer and you can set your direction. I believe mine should be 135, yeah. 135. Oftentimes on my site plan I do like to include a sun shadow and you'll find underneath the line tool a sun angle. Let's come over here and draw a sun angle and here's where you can specify the latitude and longitude. If you're curious what it is in Coeur d'Alene these are the values. Choose your date and time. I'm going to choose July 4th and then I'm going to set it for 4 p.m. Once you've got the parameters selected you can choose to make the shadow and that will generate your shadow in the floor plan or in the site plan here. And with a little bit more work, you can clean up the site plan, add in the rest of the callouts, and here is the completed site plan. I'm going to move on in the next segment of the video and take a look at adding the roads and walks and stairs in the design. We'll also add those onto the site plan.